In our previous demonstration, we saw how we can implement transactions to ensure that any unit of code successfully completes or not at all. Now, when you define that, you do ensure that if some sort of failure occurs, a read-write record from the hard drive, a power outage, a service failure, whatever, uh, when that occurs, or I should say if that occurs during the execution of the transaction, then it simply goes away. It never happened. Now, I do still have the same thing happening here where I've defined a transaction and I'm using the commit statement to commit those changes. But then I'm going to show you another example of a rollback wherein those changes, in fact, are not committed. And these are typically used not so much to protect against service failures or power outages, but rather incorrect data going into the database. Now, I'll, I'll fill that in a little bit more in a, in a moment, if you will. But uh, in this example, let's first of all just see what we've got here. And I'm just using a very simple test table that I created earlier. So let's just select those records out to see what's there. And you can see that we just simply have four user accounts here, user one, user two, user three, and four with the IDs uh, with matching values. So what I'm gonna do is to simply insert a new record into that table using transactions. And this one will commit the values to the table. So we'll execute that and that succeeded okay. So let's rerun the select statement and verify that we have user five. So let's scroll down here and there we do see user five has been created. So that change was committed to the database. Now, as for undoing and recovering your records with respect to using transactions, basically what happens here is you want to ensure that invalid data does not find its way into the table. So I'm just going to demonstrate the effects of the rollback statement here, but in a practical example, you would not insert a record and then instantly roll back the transaction. You would do some kind of an error trap, which would validate is the record acceptable before you would roll it back. But that's just a little bit beyond what we can do in terms of the scope here. Uh, you do have to define what's called error handling techniques uh, to make sure that the users are inserting correct values. But the end result is the same. So you can see here, I am starting another transaction and I'm gonna insert a new record into the table. In this case, it's just simply going to be user six. But you can see what I'm doing at this point is issuing a rollback statement. So we're just going to work on the assumption that user six is invalid. We don't have six users. We only have five, something along those lines. So this just simply represents an invalid record. So we're going to select this code and we're going to try to execute it. And you see that this, this did succeed down here, but we did have a rollback. So what happened is that this record simply did not enter the table. So we can verify that by just using our select statement again here. And we in fact should only still see our five records. So let's verify. And sure enough, we do not have a user six. So that just demonstrates the capabilities of restoring or recovering your tables when you've got incorrect data uh, or inaccurate data. So again, you do need to implement some fairly thorough error trapping simply to ensure, is this record acceptable? So you need to maybe do some if exist statements uh, or any kind of error trap wherein maybe they entered the wrong data type um, maybe they put a duplicate value into a field that you don't want duplicates in, but there's no index on that field, things along those lines, just anything that violates the integrity of the data. So you have to trap that. Then if it occurs, then you simply roll back that record so it does not happen. And you can issue an error to the user to inform them that this record was not processed successfully uh, and that they need to try again, basically with valid information. But either way, your rollback simply discarded that statement because we just did not want it in the database. So even though it succeeded in terms of the statement itself, the record never got inserted. So you can always issue rollbacks whenever you discover that there was any kind of inaccurate or violating data 
finding its way, or at least attempting, I should say, to find its way into your tables.